Hello everyone. This video is designed to talk about rotator cuff injuries as well as diagnosing and managing disease that can range from rotator cuff tendonitis, supracromial bursitis, as well as degenerative and traumatic rotator cuff tears which are common musculoskeletal problems that affect 30 to 50 percent of people over 50 years of age. We will be specifying the tears in the rotator cuff in this section. The shoulder joint is considered a ball and socket joint. However, its stability is sacrificed for mobility. The glenoid has a shallow rim and can be described as looking similar to a golf ball on a tee. The stability of the rotator cuff is enhanced by the four muscles that originate on the scapula and then insert into the superior humeral head. These muscles are include supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, subscapularis. Rotator cuff tears can result from injury or were degeneration. Your rotator cuff might be torn if you fall on your outstretched arm or lifting something too heavy with a jerking motion. Other injuries such as broken collarbone, dislocated shoulders, or fractured wrist can cause this type of tear. Gradual wear and tear of the tendon over time is what causes most tears. The most prevalent causes of rotator cuff disease is age. The process of degeneration is progressive. As we age, this natural degeneration takes place and is usually not painful. When the joint's anatomy differs from the ideal anatomical shape, the well-orchestrated interplay between the muscles can be disturbed and leading to an imbalance in the forces. The muscles and tendon of the rotator cuff are prone to degeneration through repetitive trauma due to this imbalance, consequently resulting in a degenerative tear in the rotator cuff. The acromial arch and vertical glenoid orientation had anatomical variation that were connected to a rotator cuff tear. When the arm is abducted actively, 
the humeral head is pushed into the acromial arch which results in impingement of the supraspinatus muscle. The rotator cuff tear has additional anatomical risk factor such as the three types of acromion. This consists of type 1 flat, type 2 curve and type 3 hooked. Depending on their depth and precise locations, rotator cuff tears can be classified into articular sided or bursal sided tears. The theory of degeneration microtrauma identifies partial thickness tears as a result of advancing age and chronic macrotrauma. Deep fibrous involvement results in retraction, greater tension on intact fibers and conversion to full thickness tears. These tears are caused by inflammation and oxidative stresses that cause tenocyte apoptosis during tissue remodeling. Age-dependent hypovascularity contributes to the development of rotator cuff tears. A zone of critical hypovascularity lies 10 to 15 milliliter before the rotator cuff insertion on the head of the humerus. Moreover, the factors that are associated include limb dominance, contralateral shoulder, smoking, hypercholesterolemia, posture, and occupational dispositions. During the proliferative phase, the anti-inflammatory M2 REG macrophage increase scar tissue formation rather than promote the regeneration of normal tendon tissue. They attract fibroblasts from the epitonin and peritonin to infiltrate into the tendon, which have increased transcription of genes and coding for collagen and thereby form a scar tissue that mainly consists of the collagen type 3, which is mechanically unstable. Regeneration and degeneration are in balance during normal muscle homeostasis because mutual interaction between atrophy and regeneration. Overloading of the muscle leads hypertrophy of the muscle fibers and conversely unloading of the muscle disturbs the balance and induce pathways that ultimately lead to the degradation of the fibers. Progression of shoulder pain is often experienced around the anterolateral shoulder margin. On the lateral 
surface of the arm and down to the elbow. Night pain can occur in patients and may result in muscle weakness. The pain may be acute and result from a traumatic event or it may be gradual and mild but consistently worsening. Generally, when an active individual can no longer do their sport, activity or job without causing pain, they will report it. Frequently, they make an effort to adjust or modify their biomechanics to stay active. They will present only when they are unable to adapt anymore. Once the pain continues or the velocity drops sufficiently, will they seek care. Furthermore, patients will report increasing pain and difficulty with overhead activity, activities of daily living. They may also report pain when lifting or carrying heavy objects. Quite often, they will report pain when lying on their side to sleep. On physical exam, tenderness along at the insertion of the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor muscle in the greater and laser tuberosity can be present. Upon inspection, muscle atrophy may be visible in the supraspinatus or infraspinatus fossa of the scapulae. There is little evidence to support any of the commonly used tests used to diagnose rotator cuff pathology as being highly sensitive or specific. The job sign, empty can test, Hawking sign, and the painful heart test used to evaluate for supraspinatus tendinopathy. The clinical diagnosis of rotator cuff tears can be assisted by this test. Radiological evaluation is necessary to establish diagnosis of the rotator cuff tear once it is clinically suspected. To provide a clear view of the tendon, ultrasonography is invaluable. The MRI can provide important information and outstanding particularities not only about the size, extent, and position of the rotator cuff tear, but also about the retraction procedure. Muscle atrophy, chronic changes in the tendon, and muscle associated with degenerative changes and other associated pathology. Differential diagnosis of rotator cuff tear. Slap lesion or other labral tears, subacromial impingement from bursitis or acromial bone spurs, acromioclavicular 
osteoarthritis, bicep tendinitis, calcific tendinitis, cervical radiculopathy. Thank you for watching this video. Please make sure to subscribe. We will see each other in the upcoming videos.